What's up everyone? Welcome to one more video. Before we start, uh, there are two things I need to talk about because the, uh, they are two very important things. The first thing is, as you can read in the title of this video, um, I'm gonna be sharing some ideas of things you can do. Or maybe when you don't have any ideas, or maybe where because you don't know where to find them. And I decided to bring those 20 ideas for you to try um, regarding to this uh, style, this, this culture. And what I need to say, first of all, I am not gothic obviously, um, even though I, sh I I like to embrace some aesthetics, some parts of the style into my personal style, I am not gothic. I don't listen to gothic music, by the way, I'm going to see Anna Shikara today. They're not gothic. I am more of like a, a metalcore kind of person, but I, there are some uh, parts of the culture that I really like um, in terms of, of fashion, fashion-wise, but I do not share the culture. So um, this video is not me dictating what gothic style and gothic fashion is or gothic culture is because it's not my standpoint. Um, I do not belong necessarily to this genre, to this culture. So that is the most important thing. First of all, if I make any mistakes, I apologize in advance um, for all the people who are actually part of this culture. Second thing, uh, for people like me, before starting to make a video like this, and for those who are a bit interested, I made a short a wee introduction to the culture so then we can understand a bit before we go through the rest of the video. There was That was really important to me as well because that means I could understand the basis, I could understand um, what brought this to that, and even though it's short, I made my research first so then I, I'm not just like saying anything wrong. So you stay with that uh, video now and I'll see you in a couple of minutes. The oranges of goth culture can be traced back to the late 70s in the UK. It emerged as a distinct subculture within the broader punk movement characterized by this rejection of mainstream values and embrace of alternative aesthetics and ideologies. One of the key places where the early goth scene thrived was the Bad Cave. A famous nightclub, DIY clothing, leather jackets and safety pens became staples, but it was the darker, more theatrical aesthetic that truly set goth fashion apart. Some of the key elements of goth fashion include dark clothing, pale makeup and elaborate hairstyles. Black is the primary color, often accompanied by lace, velvet and fishnet fabrics, pale complexion, dark eyeliner and black lipstick colors are a signature look, complemented by hairstyles ranging from teased hair to bold colors. Accessories also play a very significant role in goth fashion, adding to the aesthetic and incorporating symbolism. Chokers, crucifixes and platform boots are common, while bats, skulls and pentagrams adorn clothing and accessories. Over time, goth fashion diversified into various subgenres, each with its own unique style, romantic goth to cyber goth and Victorian goth to industrial goth. The genesis of goth style can be traced back to the twilight years of the 70s, as punk gave way to something darker and more introspective. Bands like Bauhaus and their iconic track Bella Lugos is Dead laid the groundwork for the gothic aesthetic with references to the macabre and haunting vocals. Before goth became a distinct style, pioneers like David Bowie and Joy Division hinted at a darker sensibility. The bad elements like dark femininity and sheer fabrics began to take shape. Goth fashion spread globally, influencing alternative music scenes and underground cultures. Bands like the Sisters of Mercy propelled goth into the mainstream consciousness, with their dark clothing and brooding charisma capturing the imaginations of a generation. In summary, the emergence of Gothic culture was a complex interplay of literary, musical and cultural influences. It represented a rebellion against status quo and a celebration of dark beauty and individuality. Over the time, Gothic culture has evolved and diversified, but its core values of creativity, introspection and embracing the shadows continue to resonate with individuals around the world. And it is important to remember that gothic fashion is more than just clothing. It is a statement, a lifestyle, and a celebration of the beauty found in darkness. 
So I separated 20 ideas of things you can try to make yourself. Some of them have patterns, some of them don't have patterns, but I introduced, I brought some patterns related to it that you can do it yourself and come up with the results you want. So it's mostly like an informative video, an educational video that I decided to share with you guys. So I came up with 20 things, 20 ideas. They are um, divided uh, between dresses, accessories, jumpers, things I looked and I was like, this is interesting. Let's start with the first first item of this list, that is this dress. So there are actually tons of ideas that could um, fit here, but the conclusion I came with this whole thing is that like, it does not necessarily mean that it's gothic because of a like jumper or a dress that you're wearing. I think what makes the culture be the culture is everything that is behind it. Lots of accessories, the makeup, the hairstyle, like the music, it is is a whole thing. It's not just based on a piece of clothing. So yeah, this is the kind of thing that we need to understand, you need to understand before you make something that you have to add things to it. How much can I do with an item? You can do so much with it if you look beyond just a piece of clothing. I think that's the most important thing. So this dress you're seeing there is a spider culture dress by Sandrine Philippe. I think he's uh, French. Uh, technically, I don't know him at all. I've never heard of him before, but honestly, I really enjoyed his designs. As you can see, like he has some crazy stuff, like it's really nice stuff. The idea here with this dress is that like I did not like bring this dress for you to copy it like exactly it is just an inspiration it's just for you to feel inspired by so with crochet you can recreate this dress by using the distress effect just basically like you crochet normally and then you skip some stitches and like you bring the thread within skipping some stitches and then you have this like ripped kind of uh, apocalyptical um, <laughs> design in the end of the day so I think that is um, that's the way I, I would do it dress also also appears to be made more like free-handed so if you already know how to make a normal dress um, all you have to do is to apply this technique I have some levels for all the items I brought here like from beginner to more advanced and this dress is not for beginners I don't believe like I think you have to you need to have a little bit of like like a basis on how to make a garment before you just go decide to make something like this by the way I'll leave the, um, the link for a, a distress tutorial like a distress effect tutorial on my description on description here so you can go for that now the dress number two, it's not crochet. But the good thing is like, as, as I notice with crochet more and more every day, is the kind of thing that you can literally do anything you want with crochet. It's just such a, like a versatile like craft. You can always look at something and then turn that into something else. I think this is how I see fashion and this is how I see crochet. And that's, that's why I decided to bring some items here that are not necessarily crochet with a pattern and everything, because like it is the kind of thing that you can build yourself if you know some techniques, of course. But moving to the dress, so if you take a look on this dress, you will see that this dress is see-through. So I think it's kind of like a tulle material. Um, and to make a crochet version of this dress, you will need to make like probably with mohair yarn or like an alpaca yarn kind of thing, uh, alpaca silk. Um, it's basically like, say, like this kind of yarn here. Uh, using like probably a super thick crochet hook or just like by skipping, skipping some stitches. Um, for patterns, um, I don't have a pattern for this one, obviously, because it's not crochet but you can make like the the dress like in separate pieces and then join them together for example for the bottom part of this dress as you can see is kind of like a ruffle skirt so you can make like a normal like sleeveless dress with mohair and with mohair again you can create the bottom by using the ruffle skirt crochet pattern um, for the sleeves is the exact same thing mm, you can always crochet them separately or if you're more advanced you can already make it like the front and back panel already using the ruffle skirt pattern with it all together. Since I don't have a pattern for this one specifically, um, I separated like a tutorial for a ruffle crochet skirt. There is a pattern for that on the, on the description and a pattern for a long sleeveless, a long sleeve dress. So you can kind of apply whatever you see on those patterns and then make something like this by using bright yarn and just for the shape of it and then putting them all together depending which level you are. That's a good one. The third one follows kind of like the same vibe of the second one, but like this is 
is mostly like a kind of like a long jumper, like a kind of a long, maybe oversized jumper that you can turn into a dress. I would also use mohair yarn for this one because I think it's like the see-throughness thing is the thing. Um, the only different thing about this uh, item, this dress, is that like on the bottom, uh, both on the sleeves and the bottom of the dress, you have like kind of like ripped effect. So there are two ways I can do this. So of course you can do the distress thing um, or you can just like crochet that separately like a bunch of thread, a bunch of like something more free-handed and then you can attach it afterwards. But I think if you go with the distress effect thing, you will you will get to that. So for this one, I left a tutorial. Yeah, I mean, this is just basically like a jumper. That will be a jumper tutorial description somewhere because there are jumpers on this video, but yeah. Now the fourth dress, which it might be a bit controversial because people will be like, Oh, but it's a white dress. It's like gothic and wear white. That's not true. So it is called a Moonchild dress and it was made by Crochet Verse. Um, I found it on Reverie. It's a paid pattern. Um, but the good thing is like there is a pattern completely, fully, perfectly made for you to try. With this dress, like, of course, if you don't like the white color, you can go for a different color. Like go for black, go for purple, go for red, dark blue, go for dark gray, dark green. There are plenty of other colors you can use for this dress. Voila. The fifth dress is the kind of thing like, I'm not sure if it's crochet or not. It is made with some sort of thread. I don't know, but it looks like. But the thing is like, why did I, do, did I bring this dress here? Because it's something you can make with crochet. So with this dress uh, is an inspiration to create your own like goth base crochet dress. With this one, you can choose your stitch and basically follow along with it. I would use a plain net stitch for this one or a fillet crochet. Um, this dress is also like a construction of parts. So you can like make a normal, dress like front and back panel but like of course on the bottom you can make like a decrease and so then you have like this open uh art here which i completely forgot what it's called in english i, I really apologize um and then on the top you can make separately like a bikini top that that will be part of our list as well so you can already put all of them together so you can create this base on top and then attach them together with the bottom and for the sleeves it looks like a sh you could make like a shrug and just attach it afterwards as well so then you would have this dress and i think it's for this dress I will leave pattern for the top and a pattern for the shrug and the skirt is just a skirt you know front and back panel go nuts you might look at this dress and be like Gabby yeah, like come on, I'm trying to help you're not trying to help me you're not trying to help yourself what the heck are you doing this dress is so cool. This dress is called a Juliet dress. It was made in 1969. The pattern for this dress was made in 1969. Do you know how old this thing is? Do you know how cool this thing is? This thing is older or almost was born with the whole gothic culture. So change the color. But as I said, it's not about the, the, the item, it's about what you put with it. And good thing is, I have a pattern for this, it's linked on a, on a description of the video. Now it's time to move on from the dresses and go for an accessory. This is the kind of thing that it, I really liked it. It is a crochet bunny ears. It's kind of like a beanie with ears, which is pretty cool. So I found this and I think it's actually a, a great idea to make it like gothic in terms of like how you make it. As you can see, some of those options are already like very good examples. They're already quite like very alternative and things like that. Um, I would make probably like a white one with like the tips being kind of like a blood stain. As you know, I like the blood stain kind of things and my stuff of those um i would do that on the tips probably or i like there's also a nice way to just like make like half black and half white and the white also put like some blood stains on the tips you know play along with something more like horror you know there are tons of ways you can do there are already some good examples here on this, these pictures it's a good item moving on to the next item now is also kind of like an accessory uh i decided to bring a ribcage corset because i just i just made one recently and it was meant to be used with this stuff i made but i made one and i think it's such a cool thing like it is really cool um it is really like not rocket science to make one of those it's per se i actually recommend you guys using like a very very good quality cotton yarn because i used a very shitty one and it does not look so good in the end because it needs to be like it needs to be thick to sustain you don't want it to stretch that's my tip for you if you decide to make one of those and i know you wouldn't expect me to bring bikinis but i did um i decided to bring three ideas that it can be used both ways as a bikini or as a top 
for you to try as well item i this is actually a bikini itself is being uh, sold on etsy there is no pattern for it unfortunately but the idea here is to show you that like you can make a normal bikini top that you can always find tons of patterns for it and you can just play along with it you can add like chains you can add rings you can add crochet chains you can add like play along with lines on top like it really goes it's entirely up to you this is just like the first dress you just need to use a bit of your imagination to bring the the, the style within your your item the tenth um is kind of like yeah it's a bikini slash top as well it's more like let's say it's kind of like a classic uh, crochet top the only difference is that like you have this pentagram design which is really cool and for this one there is a full pattern for it there's also a link on the description of this video <laughs> now moving to the 11th item um the last idea is for a bikini the spider web hanging on the bottom of it the bra i'm pretty sure the stop is super beginner friendly as far as i'm concerned so i would give it a go pattern is also in the description okay moving on to jumpers now my favorite Jumper number 12. So the first idea here is to make a normal normal jumper. And it, when I mean normal, I mean like plain normal crochet jumper, front and back, um, and plain sleeves as well. So the trick here is the back. For the back, instead of making a full plain boring black pattern panel, you will add the spider web to it. Um, and I also like the idea, as you can see there, to add like a bit of like this transparent fabric uh, on the inside, so then you have more of like the spider web like effect. Uh, there is actually a YouTube tutorial for that one. Yep. This is such a good jumper. Jumper number 13, I wish I had it right now. There is no pattern for it because this jumper is literally like a free-handed kind of thing, you know, because you have the distress thing, the stress effect that you add to it, so like it's more like you make a normal jumper and then you make the distress part like go with the flow where you want to have more open, more close. It is also, again, watch the distress tutorial video that I left on a description and yeah. Now, moving on to the last jumper, which is this one. I am pretty like obsessed with ribcage and bones and things like that. I am a huge fan of it. Look at this top. And I know I some know people are kind of like, Gabby, yeah, are you out of your mind? Because is this the kind of thing you're going to be making up? Yes. 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 Adding uh, the, the rib cage afterwards just by making one separately and then attaching on a jumper. What if you already have all together? What if you're ready just like crochet all together by using an alpha pattern? How about that? For this jumper here, there is a, a full written pattern of this jumper, which is like easy peasy, amazing. Now we have five more items to go, and with the 15th one, I brought a scarf. I think to me, it's like my favorite item on this list. If not my favorite, just one of my favorites for sure. Um, yeah, and again, shout out to the creator of this pattern because she is the tea, man. She is the tea. Like, she is the tea. The scarf is absolutely like one of my favorite things here. Like, yeah, and I think, I, th I think I'm gonna do it. She, she also has a pattern for like a <laughs> scarf. And um, I watched that movie when I was about 11, 12 years old, and I threw up a basically five to six times watching that movie. Should have, do not recommend, it's a bit gross. Actually, it's extremely gross. So I would not go for that one, but if you are, you're free to do it. By the way, if you do any of these two, just don't forget to leave her a tip on her coffee, ko-fi. I don't know how to pronounce that thing. I also created a, an account there. So if you want to tip me for all the work I have been doing, that would be great. Now moving on to something that is very much into the, the, the gothic culture, which are corsets. First one is this one, you can see. It's really not rocket science. It's just, it is, it is basically like an, an increase and decrease technique that you will be using for this one. And then you just like make a long strap and then tie it into the front. Of course, if you, you have to measure your waist and that's pretty much it but i, I haven't found a, a pattern specifically for this one you see right here but i found one for purchase but i found a pattern uh, on youtube that of one that looks pretty similar to this one so you know like it's entirely up to you the next one is it is kind of like a slightly different shape because it's like a bit smaller for a corset because yeah the straps also go more like on up to the shoulders like this it's super be beginner friendly as, as far as i've seen uh so you can probably 
probably do one in one day, which is great. There's also a pattern for this exact same one on the description. It's unfortunately paid, but still. But I also found one on YouTube that looks slightly different, but still follows the same idea, which is there's also a link for it on the description. So, uh -huh. and now the last corset is this one here. It's like a spider web again, because it's kind of like a thing. One, it's more of like an accessory. Basically a pattern for a spider web that you will make it, but you will make with like super thin yarn and having more like space between the lines. And that's basically it. And now moving on to the last two items of our list today. They're both the same um, item. Not the same item, but they're the same style, which are shrugs. Shruggies. Um, I think shrugs are very underestimated in the whole thing because I know a lot of people really hate them. I don't hate them, but I still haven't found the perfect one for me. I guess it's pretty much it. So the first one I brought is this red one. It looks like a bit knitted, uh, I don't know, crochet. Yeah, so of course it comes with different stitches and I think the straps hanging in ways gives like the slut effect that is super cool. Uh, here once again you can play with the colors. So go nuts with the colors. The pattern is on the description. I found also a super easy tutorial to follow uh, of one. Not like this one I'm showing but you can always make your own version of it like adding the things you like. And the last item. I am in love with this shrug. I'm in love with it. It's just yeah this one is more of like a vibe for this video because it has like the turtleneck which I think is super cool to add like a turtleneck on a, on a shrug. <laughs> I don't know why but it's like a, such a classy piece. Like it's, the red one is just amazing. I would change the cream color. I would add probably like black or like dark red or something like that. And probably would use the, the fillet crochet stitch or maybe like skipping some stitches and then make a turtleneck separately and then attach it afterwards. Cuffs are optional but I would also, I would make one. I would make cuffs pretty cool. And yeah, there is a crochet turtleneck tutorial available here for you. And there's also a crochet pattern for the shrugs as well. Well, that's it for today. I'm, I hope you guys liked this video. Um, if there is anything that is just not like much into there or that it didn't make any sense, let me know in the comments. I think like the way I see or I saw this whole thing while I was uh, making script and studying and looking for, for ideas, it's just basically how you decide to make and not what you decide to make. I'm already working on my next project and I'll be releasing in two weeks, hopefully. I am changing the days I am posting videos again. I tried Mondays, they did not work very well, so I'm getting back to Saturday. Um, and that's it. If you liked this video, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on my social media. I am there as FoxyGS. Hope to see you guys in my next video and bye!